Hello everybody, this is Andrew from Efficient Musician with a tutorial as to how to automate uh, multi timbral instruments from Contact 5 in Logic Pro 9. Uh, a lot of people have been having trouble automating uh, multi timbrally from Contact um, because all the um, parameters seem to get in the way of each other. Uh, you'll see what I mean as uh, we move on with the tutorial, but this will help you fix that issue and you will have independent parameters um, to change and it makes things so much easier working in a session of Logic. So let's just get started right away. Let's open up Logic. All right, we got Logic 9 up and running. And now we're going to open up uh, just an empty project over here. So first thing we need to do is we need to create a multi timbral instrument. And we're only going to do a small number of tracks. Let's just say four tracks of a software instrument. And we're going to create just for the demo purpose. OK, so let's start off with, uh, I don't know, let's say some strings and some brass. Um, how about a synth? Oof, <laughs> gotta spell that right. Synth, and let's do a bass. All right, so let's open up Contact 5. Multi output in stereo is what I like to choose. All right, now what we need to do is uh, just create some instruments. So we said strings, orchestral, VSL, uh, let's do solo cello. Okay, let's minimize that. What else do we have? A brass instrument, horns, uh, trombone will do just nicely. Minimize that. A synth, uh, synth pad, anything will do. April pan, okay. And last but not least, uh, let's get a bass. It doesn't really matter. It can even be even be a synth bass. So let's do that. Bearded, lovely. All right, now. What we need to do is we need to set up our outputs. So click output within contact. Now, as you can see on uh, this mixer down here, uh, the outputs aren't proper, uh, properly assigned. One uh, outputs one, two, and three, four only refer to um, the cello solo. You see ST1, ST1, and Trom, and they're all ST1. What we need to do is we need to create an output individually for um, each of these instruments. So what we need to do is go down to presets slash batch configuration, click it, batch functions, highlight that, and then highlight clear output section and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument. And then click that. Now that'll line up your outputs nicely with your cello on one, two, your trombone on three, four, um, and so forth makes things much easier. Um, also in your mixer down here, um, since you have a multi timbral instrument, you're going to want to click on this plus sign just so you can see all your aux tracks. Um, this puts each of these instruments on an aux track. So now um, when we want to play our strings, That's on the main track. Brass is now on aux track one. Synth. Oh, lovely. On aux two and on bass on aux three. Okay, let's get rid of that. Okay, now for um, the really heavy duty part here that everyone was seeming to have trouble with um, was automating these uh, multi timbral instruments. Now I'm going to click on automation and show you what the problem was. 
Uh, since all of these are assigned to volume animation right now, automation, what you see is, say we were going to change the volume automation of the strings. Well, you move that and look what happens. All the other automation on the other instruments changes exactly the same way. Now, that's really a nuisance when you're trying to bring volume up in one instrument and uh, you want to leave another instrument the same volume or bring it down. It really is a quite useless function. So we have to get around that. And in order to do that, you have to go back in the contact, click auto, and what you're going to see here is all these host parameters and their numbers uh, and showing you what knobs and faders um, and functions on these instruments that they are controlling. So what we want to do in order to control uh, the volume automation per se here, let's just use volume as an example since it's already up here, uh, is you need to go down, way, way down, way, way down, past all these parameters, into the not assigned territory. Um, over here it's parameter number 103. So let's just go uh, and show you how we're going to work this. In the strings, okay, so what we're going to do is in the strings, click on the volume tab, go over to one contact five, that tab, and then go all the way down here to 103. See, it's highlighted right there, and we're just going to drag and drop this parameter right onto the volume of cello solo and there you go you see it's highlighted right there and now when we ch want to change the volume of the cello the vo only the volume automation of the cello changes and we can do the same thing to each other instrument so for brass one contact five tab uh, let's choose just us go sequentially 104 click on 104 drag to the volume of the trombone once again you have a new color and a new independent automated function how nice um, the only uh, thing I do not advise you to do because it won't work this way is to click on the parameter first and then try to assign uh, the same parameter in logic. It won't work. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, so say we have number 105. We're going to do this first. This is the wrong way. Move it into our synth volume. Now we're going to look for 105 in here. Oh, it's gone. There's 106. So what we have to do is we have to click the number in logic first and then drag within contact. All right? And then you have three separate automated tracks. You can do this for all the parameters within Logic. And I hope that uh, fixes a lot of your problems. Thanks for watching.